Hi guys, my name is Gita Abiola Leakule. I want you to be watching Nas TV Africa. They are giving premium content. Shout out to Nas TV Africa. Nas TV Africa. Nas TV Africa. But the most important thing is for us to take advantage of the knowledge we all hope to impact through this training. That's the most important thing for us to apply to our knowledge. We are hoping that at the end of this training, our productivity will be improved. Our work ethics and uh, what have you will be improved. Just like the team of the uh, workshop towards uh, service delivery. So please relax and uh, pay attention and grab all that is positive that you can grab from our uh, facilitator. The name of uh, Mr. Nasser Abdul Kadri from uh, the Positive Image and NAS Television. So you are welcome to Lagos Field Office. This is Lagos Field Office, FEMA where we manage uh, and administer all federal roads under the East operation, I mean, under the Lagos East Field Office. And here are our staffs. We hope that uh, you be able to deliver a good note to us. You are welcome. Thank you very much. You are welcome to this uh I call it brief training. My name is Nasser Abdukoli. From the Positive Global Image Service Council Limited, uh, we are into management training, leadership training, public training, and uh, personal development specialist. And uh, we run an online TV station too. It's part of our essential of our entrepreneurial venture, where we showcase Africa's talent. And uh, but basically, our core competency is our uh, training. And uh, why we are here today is to interact, not necessarily to teach. Because we know that uh, most of us, there's nothing we want to talk about here today that we are not aware of. But one thing, and I discussed with uh, Mr. Lukman, Engineer Lukman, and uh, his interest, and everywhere he goes anyway, uh, I've been with him for quite some time. He, the, one of the things that he appreciates most is uh, investment in, in the staff. I think he appreciates it a lot. He believes that, okay, he cannot get best from his staff without training them, irrespective of how much it's going to cost him personally or whatever. So I think he has endeavored on his own to make certain investments to these uh, uh, unconventional kind of training uh, personally. I think he deserves a round of applause in that regard. All right. So I think he believes so much in uh, human capital development, developing people. He believes that before you can even say that, oh, you have heard or you have done something wrong, you must have been trained. You must have gone through certain 
kind of training. So that's why we are here today. But I, most of us we have heard about uh, a civil service strategic implementation plan. It's the rave of the moment now in Abuja. And uh, again, the way I do my training is this. My own approach. I'm not just going to tell you that uh, try to be the best on your job, give your best. I think the most important thing is that it be the best in your life. Whatever you do for favor is what you're doing for yourself. And then we should have it at the back of our mind that one day we we'll go on retirement, no matter how long you stay. So that should be the paramount thing on your mind. And let me now tell you the principle. There's no way your lifestyle after service can be different from the way you live during service. Take it. If you don't take this job serious, do not think you are going to take yourself serious when you start your own. It's not possible. It's, there's no disconnection. Because the very hand, the, the miss pre exists in the hand. It's very simple. It doesn't theory. belong to you. It doesn't belong to Tinobu. <laughs> so whether you do it right or you do it wrongly, civil service, civil service will always be. <laughs> so that good, so that come. So it's not you that's on the line that you have to do very well. You have to put in your best. You have to be able to convince yourself because that thing will always be with you after. That's so we can separate it. So let's do something. We want to do one experiment. But can we touch our head, all of us? Your head, please. Your back head. Your forehead. Your nose. Please touch your eyes. Touch your hair. Touch your chin. You see your life? Is that your chin? The Federal Civil Service is a constitutional body. It's another distraction. This, this. The government largely carries out its function. Several attempts have been made in the past to reform civil service. The FCS SIP was a reform that was designed to tackle the various challenges facing civil service and this and that. Please, this one. Go. Let's go. What's the reform definition? A process of effective change in order to make things work better. A planned and systematic intervention aimed at producing a fundamental change involving innovation, modernization, and attitudinal reorientation in terms of values and service delivery. That's just it. The essence of its uh, reform is attitudinal and uh, service delivery. In private sector, most of us we use bank. Though it's been long, most of us enter bank because of POS and uh, ATM and the transfer. In those days, before you can get your salary, you have to get to the bank and queue up. How do you feel? What bank comes to your mind when it comes to service delivery? The bank that you like in those days, let's say about 15 years ago or 20 years ago. In terms of service delivery. In those days where you enter maybe Union Bank, before you can see the manager, you will sit for like an hour. You will still feel form. But when the new generation bank came, they came with the superb service delivery. The manager will be the one to come out and miss you. Yes, ma. Even if you are selling something not more than two, three million, the manager will still come with the staff, sit down with you. But before you can see the brand manager of Union Bank, First Bank, uh, ODUBA, it's like you are seeing a governor. Back of, <laughs> Back of the north. It's like you want to see a governor. But when those new bank call, they look at that gap and they are treating people with respect. People are just moving their accounts. And then when somebody mentioned First Bank, you mentioned First Bank. First Bank quickly, out of the old generation bank, that they, they, they are still standing. They quickly look at what the new generation bank are doing and they change their way. Value the orientation. Massive training. Like what are we, why are we doing this today is because uh, if they are talking about staff of uh, all other feed, and they are talking about East feed in Lagos, they should be able to say their staff. No, it's like there's something extra about them. I know no matter what you do today, if it's thirty percent of it you take and you adapt it to your way of doing things, things will change. Honestly speaking, it will stand out. People notice those things easily. The way you talk to the staff, the way you talk to the customer, the way you treat yourself. The way well, between the howl of hate and fall, the way you handle your job, your businesses, 
when the contractor calls the way you talk, the way you advise professionally, what you don't know, you ask the colleague that know very well, you move to the table to table to know, okay, why, what's wrong with this? Why are they, why is the top management saying that this contractor did not do well? It's not that like somebody will call me, call you, ah, that's not my table, I will call you, I want to in here, I want technical. You don't do that. <laughs> You don't do that. In bank, you don't do that. When you see a banker, I say you want loan. You will never say, how much do you want? And everything. Okay, can you come tomorrow? Quickly, he has talked to somebody. Two of them we call. The other say, it's not me. He's a... Uh, no. As long as you have the sense of blaming somebody for your lot, that person is not going anywhere in life. That's the principle of life. And that's part of the thing we should teach our children. If you really want to change your life, that's how it goes. Let's go, please. Purpose of the request to bring about improvement. Let's go. The new service reform, erosion of public service values. We used to remember those days when they used to talk about uh, super uh, PAMSEC. We used to hear that name. In those days, why do they call them super PAMSEC? No, there are people that they call super PAMSEC in those days. The way, who has the parents that, that were civil servants here? Yeah. That your parents they were civil servants? All of us? Some of us? You see the way they used to take that job. I see their entire life depend on it. You see the principal, especially those men. <laughs> All the, you know, civil service, before now, the ministries that we had, maybe not more than eight, but it was the function of those palm sake, the directors, that we always come up with proposal that is it not better that we have this and this. Aging working workforce. Aging workforce. Some of us uh, we have we are aged. How old are you? Because it you look 55. Mm. <laughs> yes, sir. So they want to do uh something about that aging workforce where people who still have something to but i will realize that the the service delivery is not entirely about what about age it's about readiness to to work there are so many old people that are still working and you see young people that are not ready to do much weak and inappropriate organizational structure you understand structure and the poor succession plan all these things are the things, lack of accountability, procurement, budgeting and accounting, poor condition of service and low remuneration. You understand? You should be going to office and you should be happy that you are going to the office. Poor and ineffective, your lack of innovation, absence of systematic training, inadequate deployment of uh, intervention. Let's go. So these are the things, redesign and relaunch, core training modules, and induction, smart P, specific, measurable, accurate, and launch strategic sourcing of identified skills. <coughs> Not everybody, there's some of you that you are in, in nature, that you can do better in technical. There are some people in audit that they can do better in research. So all those things they said they are still coming up by the time they want to implement this. And launch a salary review every time. And I'm going to speak briefly about that. Uh, when it comes to salary, part of the training, part of my strategy that I talk about is that um, before you can, you have to understand how to develop your own personal life. Salary, you understand? cannot make you rich. Hmm? But it can be source of richness to you. You understand? Never save. Never save money out of uh, fear of what? Fear of poverty. When they tell you that you should save, what do they mean? What do they normally tell us about savings? Save for what? What's the meaning of rainy day? That was fashion. Can you imagine? You, see, you can see the kind of thing they put in our head. 
you can see how they inject that kind of thing to our consciousness that no matter what you have now you are still going to face poor day poverty is coming so save for the day poverty will come so that you can meet it can anybody tell dangote today to save for any day <laughs> can you tell or tell or any you know so many rich people around you that you cannot tell them that there's just some of them do not even have savings again you know in economics we have y is equal to c plus high consumption plus investment plus savings at the point by that you do your factorization you discover that savings is equal to investment so where you are saving some people have investment don't think your savings is in vacuum if you bring me two million to my bank today to save the moment you come i'll you are a businessman i'll give you the two million so if you come today to collect your two million it's not the two million you give me that i will give you it's the one you are depositing today that i will give her are you getting my point yes <laughs> so you have used the money the money has gone so most of these rich people they don't have savings that's why when you see that go or offer me or tell you i need one billion today they, they don't do you, i know you always hear that which of the my investment can i liquidate <laughs> which of my investments can I look at this? Let me see. Let me see. You understand? So they are not. They don't have savings because they understand the game. Now how would I put money in the bank that somebody else will be using it? But here you are. You save money. You put money in the bank, and one event can take it away. So what I'm telling the civil servant now is that don't save for rainy day. Save for what? Opportunity day. The day you will have the reason to invest your money. I remember those days when we were in banks. People will come around to say they want to. They want to borrow money. At the way we give them money, we give them two fifty thousand, five hundred thousand, and they will go and buy television to watch people with vision inside their own television. Some will go that screen. Some will put their five hundred thousand. If I give some of you now one million, some of you will quickly go and put it inside that house that you have not started the foundation. And the room being what I did, you are in stock. <laughs> you are stuck already. And the building is not going anywhere. And the entire one million is there. And you'll be now be paying with your salary for the next two years. For investment that is not yielding anything. That's the kind of thing that we do. That's why people remain uh, encircled with poverty for a long time. You understand? So but that one million, if you get it, I will now quickly invest it, maybe towards Christmas. You now buy, you collect your home towards Christmas, the one million. You quickly invest it, meet with the, with the ogre. Ogre, do you, are we buying anything for people? Are we doing any Christmas gift? Yes, you want to do it, then I'm selling hampers. Are we giving our contractor anything? Are you the one that is supplying that? Because you rush, quickly rush to the bank, you borrow one million, you buy your hamper, on a one hamper you are making like 3,000 or 35. And you buy like 30, 40. So the company bought from you and they pay you back. You'll be able to pay your loan conveniently and still make money. But you get your own one million and you go and buy a Swabi and the latest shoe. Do you get what I'm saying? So when we say salary review, don't let them be using it. They use it to perpetrate us. In. Get a salary review like the 35,000 extra they said they want to pay now. Don't put your mind that you own that at five thousand. You understand? Take your mind away from it. Don't even see it as your money. I know most of us are already planning against it. We even want to borrow more. <laughs> already, some of us are already living on that at five thousand extra. You understand? But it's really people, real people that want to be successful, even after service, they take their mind away from that at five thousand. So that at five thousand, they quickly have small investment. That's why if you have investment. What do I call investment? Don't look at it as a big thing. Investment is not like investing that good day. Uh, you can have a shop. See, yeah, they are selling because because most of us are yeah, maybe the person who has the largest time here. Yeah, I don't think maybe few of us we have twenty years more <coughs> or twenty-five. You understand in terms of age, all the number of years you have used in service. And by that time with the face that looking, you are still going to be very young. I, 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 you can see the kind of people that are ruling you. They are 70, 80. They still have the energy. So you still be useful. 
So whatever the reform, reform is to prepare you for productive life. It's not just about civil service. Never see anybody who is trying to train you as somebody who wants you to put your best in the job alone. Put your best in your life. Because when you are happy with yourself, that's only where you can give us the, the best. Please, apply yourself to every job you are doing here. Give your best to every table you find yourself. Do it as if when people, if people have not started telling you that your wala is too much, kilo deshe, yashe, baba she, you too like wala. If they are not telling you that, you are not doing anything in life. I used to tell my wife, if the teachers are not telling you that your wala is too much for your children, you are not a good parent. Let people complain. Let people say that, what is your problem? Little things, my child, my child. Yes, that's what makes you. But you are, signing, you are running away from people saying your wala is too much. You can never be the best. Or is there anybody here that can love his wife when nobody is telling you that it was is it God said Until people begin to tell you that it was your problem. Are you the only husband around? That is the only way you are loving. If they are not calling you Ruth Abokofu, you don't love your husband enough. That's how life is. People must complain. When people are not complaining, like your wallah is so much, you are not really giving your best. When people tell you that, ah, I like you, you don't take anything. What, what did he, what, what is 330? Ah, it's not good for you. I mean, God, you know, there's a way they can tell him. That's we use it in private sector. They can tell him that they need some people, they need like four or five people. They want to take to Abuja for a committee that if you are if you find yourself in that committee, you can become multi-millionaire because it's going to be a very big project. And they will tell him that to give them five people. And they will never tell anybody. We just come here. Madam, please we are coming on Saturday or Sunday. We have some things that I have to say to you. My girl said we should do some reports, so we are going to do it. Ah, okay, Saturday or Sunday, eh? Ah. Okay, just say, excuse me, but I don't have to kill Ah, me, I have not been staying with my and then my mother, my father. It's all right, you can go. <laughs> it's okay, no problem, madam. They will do okay, mister. You are coming Saturday or Sunday. Eh, what time, sir? And then is the, we, we use that one to just measure readiness to work. You will not tell you why we are doing that. In most cases, the opportunity to grow. You know, we are, we are so stereotyped in our thinking that we believe, most of us, that you think that becoming a millionaire, ha, huh? has just jammed down with now, has just given me 100 million naira. This woman, this man, take. That's the way we think. You know, when we are small, we used to think that if you want to be rich, just if you, maybe you are inside one bush and they are pursuing arm robber and they throw the money away. <laughs> We all imagine it, I just see it. You go, ah, this one. You know, those are all these Yoruba movies. That's what. <laughs> so, they are, they are bastards, our mentality that we believe that to become rich, you just have to miss someone. No. To become successful, civil service is a means to an end. It's not an end. It's just a way of giving you a platform in order to attract opportunity that you deserve to your life. You get my point? It's a platform for you to attract opportunities that you deserve in your life. If you take it with levity, the opportunity will not look at your side. Opportunity will not come to your side. So don't ever let anybody throw you away. Don't ever let anybody have an impression that you don't have anything to do. When they are distributing work, when they are sharing work, responsibility, let them remind them, let them remember you. Don't ever put yourself in a position where they say, surely, she shall eh, if you can let take up. No. Even if they are sharing job and they are not giving you a fight, okay, I can do it too. One, two, three times. Nobody will say thank you. If you are expecting thank you, you not give your best. If you are expecting thank you, if you are expecting somebody to say, wow, you are working, you will not give your best. And then they will do what? They are killing you. That's why I was here today. He said, oh, what are you about? So he said, they are the one that will not give you responsibility and the when it is time to do appraisal is that you don't do anything. <laughs> so you suffer at both ends. 
Because nobody will take responsibility for that. We don't give her a job. No, she doesn't like to work, ni, or he doesn't like to work. So please, always give in your best. That's the best way to develop yourself. And it let us train our children like that. That's the only way we can build a prosperous and a productive society. People that take responsibility, that want to be involved in everything, that want to know everything, those are the people that... Let me tell you something. They want to take a decision to share 100 billion naira bonus. They will not call people. I've never seen where they call people that come and collect. I've never seen it. They want to share other billion bonus. They will never call anybody. They would rather tell people that uh, we have a job to do this night. There's a supervision we have to do somewhere. That will be around 10, 11 this night. Ah, me, I'm not coming. Okay, no problem. No one. You can stay. <laughs> so who is coming? So oh, guy will come. Uh, by the time you come, you'll be expecting them. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, let's go. You see, Gala must go. <laughs> yeah, is that not the way the same way? Is that not the same way God works? The same way God works. Why would God want to bless you? We don't do it. We give if we make it an, a, a, like a walk, it become like a walk. Like something <coughs> not to that's why we always find gold inside rock. Why, why, why did God why did God put gold, diamond? inside rock that you have to mine you have to why why are we not seeing it on the road so that's how you should understand the way so people that will be great in life must seek, uh, seek. two plus two four <laughs> two times three minus one have you ever heard something like that uh, eh? yeah. do you know that knowledge is not is memorization it's a reminder there's nothing like knowledge because when I say 2 plus 2 and 4, when I say 2 times 3 times 5, it's like that thing is in your brain. You have never done it. Maybe you might never have faced that kind of question before. No, the questions are like that, but that in that format. Then you'll be able to answer it. That means it's in your head. That's why sometimes when somebody is talking to you, you always say, okay, okay, yeah, yeah, that's true. You understand? Because it's like that thing is in your head, they are bringing it out. Training is to equip you. They have to be the best. Some of us, don't be surprised here, we have palm sake among you here. <coughs> yes. We have capital of industry. Some of us become big contractors after service. But you have to prepare for it. Okay? Because the time is coming that you'll be called upon for your call. You know, it will be very tra strategic, tragic event if you are not prepared for it. There are so many people here now, if you are called to come and do something, you may not be able to do it, even at your table level. Do you remember what happened in 2010? When Ora uh, Orosoy, you remember? Former head of service. When they called all the civil servants that are meant to be promoted to position of PAMSEC, that they should about it's about 4,000 or 5,000. They should write a uh, report seeking approval from Mr. President. They'll just write your report, write a request to Mr. President, about two or three paragraphs. Out, uh, out of all of them, maybe only 10. All the PAM said, all those directors failed because some of them have abandoned writing reports, writing requests, the moment they started having core members, junior staff, they're not doing anything again. Never allow that to happen to you. You must always write your reports. Be up to date. I, the part of the feedback we got from the Federal Minister of Finance that time was that they said some directors are already using core members. Like uh, Madam, now, if you are not careful, don't let anybody treat you like Oduma. Don't seek for respect here. The kind of respect you can seek for here is the one they give you based on your knowledge of the job. Don't let them, don't let them respect you to the point that I'm no man, I'm not worried. Uh, Oma she. That's not respectful. <laughs> That's not respectful. Maybe because somebody is that's a matter, I'm not worried. I'll ask the boy to do it. I said, okay. And you think that I'm any respect is a lie. 
let me do the job. This is my job. That one equip you. That one make you effective. A lot of that thing is happening in civil service that maybe because they bring one junior special is uh, seniors to you, you now be say, no, mama, am I worried? Uh, call the port, eh? The only thing he asks you is to bring the file. Don't take it. Let them give you, I can know it. Let me do it. Even if I don't know it, what are you doing? It's better when they say, mama, we write it. You understand? All those old um, uh, civil servants, our mothers, you can see how they are wala. You remember during Latin War, the Diagbon period? We all remember that time. When the uh, Diagbon, when those governors will bust into an office and say, oh, yeah, national item. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> all of uh, my mom came home and they will started doing it. All right. I like that we start like this, midnight. All right, so. Oh, <laughs> they have to know it, know it, know it. Or get it to office, the next day, learning West local government. That's like what went there, and he went to our table. Okay, but that, what you have Bismillah Rahman Rahim. Ah, so. <laughs> and he didn't be confident. The governor said, everybody should clap. But look at that. And the one woman fainted. You have to be a lot. You have to be a lot. Ah, right? You don't say, they will just jump through the window. But please. Always try to in civil service be good on your table. When you don't know, ask that person might be a junior staff to you, might be don't bother. Those are the things that you need. There's nothing wrong about you becoming a consultant after your service from FEMA at the local level, at state level, at national level. Know everything. What are how do they do the what are they doing? Show interest. You understand? Show interest in what is happening. Because something somehow, because this country will change, you know that. Honestly, it will change for good. <laughs>